From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2397, this is Ham Nation Headlines for Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. Ham radio operators will be at the Pentagon and other military sites around the United States next month to mark the 75th anniversary of a program in which hams support our national defense. The Air Force Military Auxiliary Radio System is marking its 75th anniversary of service to the U.S. military with a special event on all HF bands using all modes during the first week of November. Stations in each of the system's 10 wings will be calling CQ, as will the Mars station located at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., using the call K4AF. The event begins on November 5th and ends on November 11th, which is observed as Veterans Day in the United States. Mars radio operators are volunteer members of a civilian auxiliary providing communication assistance for the U.S. military when needed. The organization was created in 1948. There are Mars volunteers serving the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Army. This is Andy Morrison, K9AWM. If you use DMR, D-Star, or any other digital mode, better days are ahead. A software upgrade is in the works for the system that supports many of these modes. The multi-mode digital voice modem project, which supports most of digital voice modes used by amateur radio, is about to get a software upgrade through the efforts of Jonathan Naylor, G4KLX, and with funding from Amateur Radio Digital Communications. The open source project supports D-Star, Yezu System Fusion, NXDN, and more than 80% of the hotspots and repeaters on the Brandmeister DMR network. Jonathan, who is a developer of digital voice software, has been hired full-time to tackle a variety of issues, including bug mitigation, the creation of portable user interface on additional hardware platforms, and adding support for such industry standards as message queuing telemetry transport. According to a press release from ARDC, work has already begun in the development of packet modes for 9600, 19200, and 38400, supporting narrow bandwidth using a modulation similar to DMR. The open source project itself began in 2015. This is Jack Parker, W8ISH. Finally this week, we ride along on one family's holiday trip to the islands. The islands, in this case, include some remote locations in the Outer Hebrides off Scotland. The family includes two amateur radio operators. One of them is a seasoned soda operator looking to activate 10 summits for the first time ever. It took Ben Lloyd a lot of kayaking across the sea, finding a ride on a local fisherman's boat, battling strong winds and doing a whole lot of hiking through bogs before he could achieve some personal firsts. Ben, GW4BML, Martha and two-year-old Lyra had set off on their holiday on the 23rd of September with their camper van. Ben's goal for the family's 12-day trip to the Scottish Islands was to activate 10 summits that had never been activated before. In doing so, Ben was also achieving a personal first. Ben is also a board director for the Radio Society of Great Britain, and so it was fitting that his first contact made on Seaforth Island was with the RSGB president John McCulloch, GI4BWM. John was 200 miles away in County Antrim in Northern Ireland and was using the president's call sign GB4RS. Each gave the other a 5-9 during the 40-meter contact, and John also gave a thumbs up to Ben's invitation to join him on his next SOTA challenge. The two will be activating summits together next year when he visits. This is Jeremy Bucci for NJH. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news since 1976 at arnewsline.org. With Andy Morris and K9AWM, Jack Parker, W8ISH, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW. 7-3, we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.